Hello, this is David Vai, editor of the Microwave Journal, and it is my pleasure to welcome our audience to this TriQuint webinar on how to improve overall system performance with new TriQuint GAN products. TriQuint is an industry leader in GAN products for defense applications, as well as commercial applications like CATV and base stations, uh, continuing to drive advancement in GAN process technology. With extensive and continuing R&D programs, TriQuint has found new ways to lower the cost of GAN by improving device yield and optimizing the GAN manufacturing process. This webinar will cover how customers can achieve higher system efficiency and power over wider bandwidth and options for leveraging TriQuint GAN as an LDMOS replacement. Today's presentation will be approximately 45 minutes long, after which we will hold a 15-minute Q&A session. For inquiries related to today's presentation, please visit the TriQuint website for your nearest TriQuint sales representative. If anyone would like to see more details in the slides, simply click on the Enlarge button on your screen. Okay, at this point, I'd like to introduce today's presenter. He is Rajiv Parmar, who joined TriQuint in uh, 2012 and is now the Marketing Manager for Base Station and Infrastructure Market Power Amplifiers and Filters. Rajiv has been in the semiconductor industry for over 25 years, I'm sorry, over 20 years, and held positions in technology development, modeling, IC design, and most recently, in strategic marketing and product development, having been director of marketing at Skyworks, Maxim Integrated Products, and Motorola. He joined Skyworks Solutions in 2005 to spearhead a new business initiative into analog and mixed signal products. And at Maxim, he was the business manager for battery management products that covered such areas as fuel gauging, battery protection, and charging. He has had extensive experience in the development of power management ICs and R front ends for cellular. Beyond the uh, RF and power domain, his interests include sensors, nanotechnology, wireless devices, and smart materials. So certainly Rajiv is an expert in the field that he is about to talk. He has a master's degree in electrical engineering from the University of Florida and a BA from Colgate, Colgate University. Uh, today's webinar is uh, sponsored by Richardson RFPD. They are a specialized electronic component distributor providing design engineers with technical expertise and global design support for the latest new products from the world's leading suppliers of RF wireless energy and power technologies. Richardson's RFPD Director of Strategic Marketing, Mark uh, Vitella, Vitalero, sorry, will first tell you more about the company and their initiatives to launch TriQuint's new products into the marketplace. So at this point, we'll hand over to Mark before we listen to Rajiv. Uh, thanks, David. I've been called worse. Uh, sorry. Uh, Richardson RFPD's 400 employees serve more than 12,000 customers from our headquarters outside of Chicago, Illinois, and La uh, Chicago and LaFox, Illinois. We have 40 sales offices, seven engineering centers, and three logistics hubs located around the world. Richardson RFPD became a wholly owned subsidiary of Aero Electronics in 2011. We are a specialized electronics component distributor, providing design engineers with deep technical expertise and global design support for the latest products from the world's leading suppliers of RF, wireless, and energy technology. We also offer design and support and systems integration, as well as prototype design and testing. Richardson RFPD's design advisors are true partners with our customers, from the design and assembly of complete subsystems to searching for best fit devices for RF and wireless communications, power conversion, and renewal energy applications. Our diverse product range includes everything from semiconductors to passive components, connectors and cable assemblies, and M to M and embedded solutions. We also offer complete customized engineered solutions, component and circuit design, and custom RF test and sort services. Richardson RFPD recently launched the next generation of the TriQuint GAN Tech Hub, a micro website featuring the latest news on GAN innovations and product releases from TriQuint. The Tech Hub offers a robust library of TriQuint GAN technical resources, including white papers and videos, as well as links to online purchasing, the option to sign up for product updates via email, and personal insights from Tri TriQuint and Richardson RFPD design engineers. Available online at www dot richardsonrfpd.com slash triquint dash gan 
or on Twitter at hashtag TriQuintGAN. And now I'd like to hand the presentation to Raj. Well, um, Mark and David, uh, thank you very much for this opportunity on behalf of TriQuint and our colleagues to share with you some of the uh, activities that we've been doing on GAN. Uh, this date dates back um, quite a ways for TriQuint, uh, probably spanning over the past 10 years. Uh, and we're very excited to share this with our audience. So welcome to the audience as well. And hopefully in the next 45 minutes or so, um, you'll come away with uh, many different impressions. And um, at TriQuint, of course, we're, we're trying to create differential products which enable our customers to succeed in the marketplace. And um, one of the big reasons why we're excited about the GAN technology and we're, we're matching market interest by making the subsequent investments ourselves is in fact um, system level uh, benefits, which you'll see many um, as we go through this um, presentation and dialogue. And I, I think that's the most proper way to consider uh, why the market is so interested and excited about this technology, um, especially recently. And uh, hopefully you'll come away with the idea that this is not a component, one component versus another, uh, boiling down to uh, the simple performance metrics just at the device level or um, economics in terms of cost. So many, many different things that you're seeing here. Um, of course, with the time allotted, we're only able to cover a subsection. So um, what you're seeing is, is representative of our efforts. And when we talk about the various different products, um, consider, uh, and, and you can find this quite easily on our website, that uh, we've, we've already introduced many um, within the, the subcategories, for example, it, and discrete FETs, the power amplifiers, um, the LNAs, and, and, and even in our cable TV um, efforts. So that's uh, and if I, if I forget to mention it throughout the presentation, I think that particular count now uh, stands at, uh, at at least 40, uh, and we're, we're, we're probably um, in, in motion on just that many and uh, serving all the different product lines. So uh, we represent the infrastructure and defense product line, and I can honestly tell you that uh, there's probably no sub-segment, no business that we're looking at that isn't already active. Um, so that's the, in, in, in GAN, I should say. And so that's the exciting thing for us is that it's impacting every one of our business and product lines. Um, so let's uh, touch here a little bit. Uh, corporate, I, uh, overnight, I, I think the, we've, we've, uh, we're about to change our history here. Um, for those of you who, um, who didn't uh, didn't catch the announcement? There's uh, there's a, a merger that's about to take place between TriQuint and RFMD. Um, I obviously it's way too early to comment on uh, how that's going to uh, um, uh, shape up our our uh, next uh, strategies. But suffice it to say, from the uh, from the TriQuint standpoint, we prior to this we we're a, a global organization that have uh, manufacturing and uh, design centers, uh, primarily in the U.S. So Richardson, which is where we're located, is the facility um, uh, where we're producing uh, our GAN products. And also, I should add um, that uh, we're doing assembly and test operations here as well. Uh, we have the capability of doing that overseas as well as in other locations, uh, the, back, the back end of it, um, uh, namely and uh, we stand at about a um, billion dollars in revenue, 3,500 employees, and the combined organizations are going to be right at $2 billion and roughly 7,000 employees. So um, I think you noted already that, um, that, uh, that our new colleagues are also quite bullish on, on this technology and have already publicly announced that, um, that they would transform their three-inch um, wafer uh, facility to six inch. So we're, we're looking forward to continued investments um, and, uh, and, and progress in the overall um, manufacturing and, and um, availability of this, uh, of this process to the uh, marketplace. Uh, let's set the stage a little bit. Um, I'll, I'll talk briefly about the technology itself, uh, but primarily focusing on the products. But 
this is kind of the um, the the um, the basis for our our strategy and approach on the on the product side. And um, with respect to what we've had available, and, and this is only four of the technology nodes that we're showing here. Um, the actual list extends even further, so I can I can honestly say that TriQuint probably has the broadest portfolio of technology nodes, um, and it's allowing us to extend into uh, many different areas, including uh, frequency levels that are much higher than than what we're going to highlight for for commercial markets um, here. So uh, the the four um, uh, technologies that are kind of the workhorse for the products that we're discussing subsequently are shown on the top left. Um, we're, we're, we're basically uh, doing a quarter micron uh, process, which has a high voltage option, has been kind of the, kind of the, um, the main uh, process node, but extending further uh, into the, um, the higher frequency Ka, Ku band uh, capability, we have a 0.15 micron node that's already in production uh, so those three are already available, and um, this this year coming online, second half of the year, we'll have what we call the GAN 50, which is the half micron. So that allows us to get into even greater power densities and serve markets that demand um, and, and make use of higher breakdown voltages. So um, those are all um, coming available, uh, either coming available or already there, and that's allowed us to introduce the, the, the breadth of products that have that I've mentioned already. Um, one of the very important things with GAN, and much like anything else, uh, any other process technology, is to ensure pro uh, reliability, because the, for the markets that we serve, we're talking about um, outdoor uh, equipment. So if you mount a radio head on, a, on, a, um, on, on an outdoor system, then uh, obviously you're going to want um, um, reliability for at least 10 year, a 10 year type lifetime. What we're seeing here is that that the advantages that we can um, we can employ with with GAN uh, being that being power density that um, we can assure ourselves as well as our users that even if you look at 40 volt type reliability um, you look at the Arrhenius plot shown here that we can ensure uh, million hour type operations if not more with junction temperatures that are well above 200 degrees C so that um, allows us to take the benefits of GAN, use, use much more succinct dye and, and package and overall uh, system uh, size will reduce, but nonetheless, the, um, the reliability is, is, should, not be, um, should not be an issue um, in the products that we serve. Now, going forward, um, we're participating in several different uh, DARPA-enabled um, research projects. Uh, we're, we're looking at enhancement depletion mode GAN, as you see here, um, uh, the DARPA Next program, as well as um, on power conversion, um, where we're looking at being able to develop um, switching technology using E-mode and be able to uh, juxtapose this with envelope tracking technologies to make very, very efficient uh, power amplifiers that could serve any of the, uh, any of the frequency bands that, uh, that we're aiming at. And um, something further, which was announced uh, several months ago, was our efforts to um, realize GAN on diamond to further enhance the, uh, the thermal capability. So a lot, of, um, a lot of process technology, which is something that our design community enjoys because we have uh, both flexibility as well as the ability to um, execute on a variety of different kinds of product, technolo or, uh, product level initiatives. Um, so, so how does all this help at the system level? Um, and these are, these are kind of the main points that we wanted to make for you uh, today. Uh, that is that um, we shouldn't consider uh, any, any given component enabled or, or realized on GAN relative to gas or LDMOS as a direct comparison, but something that enables uh, much more succinctness and uh, reduction of size and weight and heat sink and um, um, complexity is, is these are all the benefits um, at the at the customer and at the system level why everybody's so keen on GAN. So um, in terms of high voltage operation, as as I showed earlier, 
we can safely get to at least 65 volt type breakdown on the GAN 50 technology, the half micron process, and possibly even higher because the breakdowns are well above 200 volts. And that's something that LVMOS can't really get to. So there's a lot of industrial ISM type applications where um, customers are looking at using that to, to drive down the, the operating current and therefore the overall power. Um, but in our, in our base station applications, much like with radar, there's a, um, a, a huge initiative to try to get toward green, green uh, equipment, more efficient, and certainly lower size, because that, that um, helps in overall CapEx and OpEx. Uh, there are certain limitations behind which um, the, the overall radio head um, has to meet in terms of overall uh, system weight because it helps in the deployment practices and so on. So, so um, all things considered, GAN, for um, at least from the power amplifier standpoint, uh, we've seen the ability to, to be able to realize and systems um, at, um, and, and take advantage of those benefits. So the cost comparisons are not directly between component level. It's what happens at the system level that should be the most important. So obviously, GAN is going to enjoy a certain premium to be able to uh, to be able to uh, um, uh, take uh, take this kind of advantage and, and uh, allow the uh, the system um, designers to be able to realize much smaller um, units. So similarly for the the um, the LNAs and switches, we're looking at uh, being able to eliminate entire components, for example, the RF limiter, uh, because of the, the power handling capability, which can be done directly for a GAN-based LNA. And um, again, that, that results in, in reduced bomb cost. So overall, it, it'll be you know, quite a benefit for the, um, for at, the, at the system level. Uh, we're probably one of the few companies working on GAN-based uh, RF switches. Uh, again, we've seen um, very high power handling, uh, low insur insertion losses, uh, very good noise figures, um, and the ability to, to um, use this um, with very low control currents. So there's the prospect of being able to replace PIN diodes um, with the GAN switches that we're doing. So... Um, I think, uh, again, if, you, if you've been following what our product releases have been looking like on FETs, we already have a very broad portfolio of discrete FETs that are based on hemp, p um, And um, as I mentioned before, that total number probably stands something like uh, 20 different introductions, if not more, if you consider the different package variations and options that we're offering um, the initial product portfolio has been released in air cavity ceramic high performance packages, and I should mention that we've got uh, quite a significant effort already at um, realizing the same types of products in lower cost plastic packages as well. So you'll see some of those introductions happening and taking place throughout the course of this year as well. So um, let's take a look at um, how some of the some of the comparisons take place between a workhorse uh, like an LDMOS, which has been extensively used in the base station case, and why we're, um, we're so interested in GAN. Uh, primarily, you see that for equivalent types of devices, in this case, this is 120 watt discrete FET. Um, by 120, we mean the saturated power. Um, we, we see upwards of 8% um, eight, eight if not more um, in terms of, of the drain efficiency, with everything else being somewhat similar, uh, similar packaging technology, similar robustness, similar frequency performance, and actu actually at the higher edges of the, of the band, namely at uh, 2.6 gigahertz, so looking at band 41, 42, 43, our uh, customers and users are telling us that the limits have already been reached with LDMOS and um, GAN offers the prospect of certainly cover, covering those entire bands, if not multiple bands. So, um, so again, in terms of system level implementation, you might be able to use one PA to cover multiple bands or get to very high efficiencies at the higher frequencies, which is something that uh, comparative technologies just simply can't get to. So uh, these are some of the places where we're 
concentrating our, our product efforts. And what we're showing is essentially Triquent and our position relative to C1 being another GAN vendor where we're ho holding uh, performance advantages as well as a couple different cases of LDMOS vendors. Um, and as I mentioned, uh, probably upwards of about an 8% type efficiency difference. Uh, and again, that's kind of a little bit of a complicated story if you look at um, what happens across multiple bands uh, in, the, in the wireless spectrum. So um, uh, an, another very, very important point that we wanted to mention is um, with regarding to our, our modeling capability, we've partnered in recent times with Modelistics. Uh, we're doing a combination, I should say, of internal development as well as external development. And, and this is quite important because many of our users, no matter how um, strong of an applications uh, and, and evaluation board that we develop, are uh, planning to do their own designs and are uh, quite a bit more experienced than even we are. So the enabler there is a very solid capability to model and include all the the um, parasitic effects as well as temperature and self-heating and um, it does offer a lot, lot of capabilities such that their designs wind up um, coming forth in, in, um, w w with a very good chance of first pass success as well as to be able to reduce design cycle times. So um, that's something that's, that's coming, uh, not only coming online now, but we're adding to it constantly and I think you'll, you'll see it available. Um, already online and um, and um, and and just being added to over time as we introduce our product. So it's our goal to <clears throat> to continue to uh, leverage this and be able to serve our customer base with a very robust modeling capability for um, uh, our, our our GAN product offering. Um, again, um, in terms of base stations, I think most of the, the learned users out there would recognize that the Doherty architecture winds up being uh, very common in, uh, in, in use in, in, uh, in uh, the uh, power amplifier topologies um, that are realized in, on the base station side. So um, here's a comparison regarding, again, with LDMOS, where you see uh, benefits of very high gain, uh, very good efficiency, and uh, the capability of realizing very wide uh, video bandwidth. So for example, if you're trying to address band 41, you would need instantaneous bandwidths that are at least 200 megahertz and video bandwidths that are around 600. So we're certainly uh, positioning our products so that uh, we can make use of that. Um, in addition, uh, we, we, there, are, there are users who are uh, heading towards carrier aggregation where, for example, band one, band two combinations are already being um, addressed at the at the chipset level for for the transceiver architectures, and the goal would be to try to take the RF um, along those paths. So you can see a lot of benefits of being able to realize um, a single architecture and serve multiple bands, and then also being able to tackle wide bands that um, 2.6 gigahertz and 3.5 gigahertz are um, are necessitating. So the the um, process and uh, product level benefits certainly allow us to get to those kinds of implementations with other technologies, just simply not being able to do it or do it with much lower performance. And that leads to higher cost in terms of um, bigger size and, and, and heating elements, as I mentioned. So probably about a 3 to 5x type delta in terms of uh, power densities which then can subsequently lead to much smaller sizes. And also, um, there, are, uh, there is the prospect of, of realizing different types of Doherty architectures, which simply could not be met with, um, with LDMOS or, let's say, gas-level implementations. So um, an, another, and, and, and I should say also on the base station side, that the obvious um, uh, place for, for GAN uh, that most people would think of is on the macro side uh, for the higher power, so certainly um, that where, where the power density is, is quite good, but we're looking at users being able to um, employ GAN-based products even for active antenna, which uh, in, in this particular case there's an 8-watt average um, uh, example given here. 
as well as in small cells as well, where the prospect would be uh, to cover not just two bands, but perhaps even more. So it's not just exclusively for the macro case, I should say. And um, this is an example where we did an implementation using an asymmetric two-to-one authority for this 8-watt P average type uh, example using um, two of our um, already introduced FETs where we're showing um, even at, at high levels of back off um, that the efficiencies are um, around uh, 57 to 60 percent, which is um, quite incredible um, as we've shown this to our customer base. Um, so, um, the commentary has been that this is the, the best GAN um, performance that they've seen. But another question mark that has been answered in recent times regarding linearity is shown here with the red curve, which is this is a corrected uh, DPD um, type uh, ACLR measurement, which is well below minus 60 dBc. So, so definitely GAN um, is now um, linearizable, uh, if you will, if that's a term, and um, with, with respect to customer-based DPD systems and third-party DPD systems, um, it's relatively easy to accomplish that. And as a result, we're, um, we're seeing uh, an, an easier uh, adoption, certainly, um, in, in the uh, base station cases and, and in other markets. So very high efficiency, um, lots of linearity. So um, again, the user can take advantage of the benefits that, that GAN provides you, which is, which is extremely high efficiencies. Um, so you'll see some of those rolling out in, um, in, uh, in, in the near future, hopefully. Um, so uh, another thing that we've been looking at um, in terms of power amplifiers, we've to date been, um, been supporting KU band with our half micron and our quarter micron, but um, our uh, 0.15 micron technology lets us serve KA band. And again, you see how wide some of the, the differences are um, between, in this case, uh, the gas-based uh, PA products. So these are, these are fully realized power amplifiers, meaning we'll have uh, an integrated um, matching stages at the input and inner stage as well. So multiple stage PAs, complete product, not just a FET. So uh, a highly integrated device. Um, and uh, two, two implementations here. The top is a, is a five watt product and the bottom is a nine watt product. And you see many, many differences, including um, size, which is almost half of the gallium arsenide implementation in the nine watt case um, and intercept point and uh, as well as, um, um, as well as, again, the, the efficiency standing at at least uh, 6% percentage points better. So, um, Quite a lot of benefits to the to the GAN, um, and I think we have a little bit more detail regarding the second product that I was showing you, which is now um, extremely flat performance over the KA band, which is spanning 27 to 31 gigahertz, which is um, quite impressive in terms of um, overall um, performance if you're looking at how flat the power is, as well as the efficiency. So at the moment, we, we've, we've got um, uh, customers who are um, actually purchasing this at the die level, and our, our packaging um, roadmap is coming into place. So this, this product will be available in a package level uh, implementation here shortly. So, um, so that's something that we're very excited about, and by no means is this the only um, HPA that we're doing. Uh, as I said, there's the, there's the second one that we were already mentioning and, and several more behind this and, and others um, already being um, designed. So low noise amplifiers, another really exciting area. Um, why? Because um, the prospect on this, as I mentioned before, is to outright be able to eliminate the RF limiter uh, from the system. And that's something that uh, that pretty much no other technology would be able to, to offer. And um, so that's why we're already sampling um, the GAN-based LNAs. Um, in this case, there's two products that I'm, that I'm showing. One um, that's uh, 2 to 6 gigahertz and uh, another that's 6 to 12, if I'm not mistaken. So very good noise figures, um, definitely in the 1 dB range and even over worst case, not that much more. Um, in terms of noise figures, so definitely 
like comparable to um, gas or SOI based type type implementations. Um, oh, sorry, I should say um, gas based um, LNAs really. And um, in terms of the the robustness, what we mean is is at the input. So we should be able to handle um, lots of input power. Uh, that's something that we're quantifying over time here. And with the prospects being that we could just outright eliminate the um, the limiter. So um, so so there there's the first two, and these are these are already available. So um, we're in uh, sampling stages, and as you see here, the die level implementations are extremely small, and um, we're heading towards package level solutions there as well. Um, so that should be that should be coming online here shortly. Um, GAN based switches, um, something that um, that allows a lot of power handling. We've already introduced a 40 watt product. And this is um, an example of a 100 watt product. And the big benefit here is um, lo very low footprint and very low control currents, um, uh, allowing um, you know, extremely high uh, power handling capability of, of 100 watts. So we're, we're seeing some interest on this um, and from multiple markets, um, including all the way from radar to instrumentation to communications, even on the base station side. So we're getting close to introducing this product, and you see here that um, that a plastic version of this switch is already being planned in a 5x5 QFN that should be coming very shortly. And um, ag again, the the um, prospect of this is to replace the PIN diode, which could definitely not come anywhere close to uh, the um, the control currents that we're that that we're seeing on 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 the GAN implementation versions. So, um, so this this should allow uh, this will allow us to leverage this product into um, many different markets. We 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 feel and, and something very unique from our part of portfolio. Um, cable TV is another area where we've had a lot of success, and um, I'll give you a little bit of a back, um, of a background as to why. If you look at the overall system, we have. Um, a breakdown of how uh, the the home usage is, is being served or, or line extenders, and it would be the hope of um, the the carrier to be able to reduce uh, the number of elements here. And um, this is the single biggest thing that that GAN would enable, which is very high output power levels, up to 3 dB higher than than gas. So the prospect of being able to use a GAN based Solution in the line extender is um, to be able to reduce the, down the line the number of elements to, and, and just be able to reduce it um, but, and eliminate entire um, nodes that would be out there serving, um, in this case, hundreds of homes. Uh, so um, um, additionally, we've got the capability to handle um, increased capability on, on, on surge um, voltages as well as ESD um, and uh, the wide uh, wide band gap um, GAN. So our technology is GAN on SIC, not GAN on silicon. Uh, again, lets us employ very high power densities. And overall, for the the, the cable providers in this case, this all means lower lower opex and lower capex. And an, another real benefit that TriQuint has is that we're vertically integrated. So we have both Galley Marsonite and GAN solutions. So it allows us to make very integrated uh, solutions, which you'll see here in the next two examples. So there's a power doubler in the line extender, and that's exactly where the GAN implementation is coming into place. So this is a system level diagram showing where that, um, where that power doubler sits in the line extender. And here are two of the of the product examples that we're showing. Uh, the T A T ninety nine eighty eight is something that we've introduced recently. Um, that is the uh, mimic, if you will, so a multiple stage uh, device in a QFN package. So very low cost plastic package because obviously these markets are very cost sensitive. And then a second product, which basically, in fact, uses the previous one, but also has some elements of um, the you know, the Galley Marsonite type, so we call it a hybrid, 
and uh, this is all sitting on a heat sink. So, so extremely integrated solution. Um, and so we're not just making discrete level products now with GAN. We're uh, we're serving entire um, uh, entire systems and offering a very high level of integration in to this market as long uh, as well as some of the other markets that I've been discussing. Uh, so that's just in a nutshell what we've been doing. As I said, power amplifiers, LNAs, switches, cable TVs being addressed, base stations, certainly in defense, uh, point to point. Um, there, there, there isn't a segment that we're not um, already making product initiatives and investments using GAN. Um, and hopefully, what what uh, what you came away with is not just the the breadth of our product offering. But some of the benefits in terms of why the advantages exist over LDMOS or gallium arsenide type implementations, and um, how it enables um, system level uh, improvements, so the users can can take a, a double benefit, if you will, not just in terms of performance, but be able to realize end products that are much more differential and competitive. So that's. Um, that's pretty much the conclusion. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully, David, we're, we've we've um, we've touched upon uh, kind of just succinctly um, where most of our product and technology initiatives are. And and if there are any uh, if there are any questions, um, I'd be happy to to see what we can uh, what we can answer for the audience. Okay, great. No, nice job, Raj. Thank you. We certainly do have some questions. And I understand you have some help from uh, some of your colleagues at Triquin that yes. will be joining you. Okay, so sure. let me introduce them. We have uh, Richard Martin. He is the product line manager for discrete transistors and IM FETs uh, with Triquin Defense Aerospace and Foundry Products. And also joining you will be Grant Wilcox. He is the product line manager for Mimic Components, uh, Triquin Defense Aerospace and Foundry Products. So um, I don't know how you guys wanted to. I, I guess I'll throw out the question, and then whoever feels most uh, comfortable. Uh, with responding, uh, we'll, we'll watch in. So our first question asks, um, uh, they picked up on the uh, comment you made, Raj, about Triquin with, with his plans to move to uh, GAN on Diamond, and they're asking how is that going to affect the cost? Uh, GAN itself is expensive, won't it still be costly? So maybe there's a couple of um, uh, embedded questions in that, in that single question. You can talk, I, I guess, about the cost and then the cost with, with regards to GAN on Diamond, and maybe you could talk a little bit more about the uh, the rollout of that GAN on Diamond and its availability, uh, when it's the preferred application, et cetera. Yeah, so, I mean, no doubt about that. I, you know, GAN on SICK is certainly not going to be, it, um, I, I mean, it's certainly, like I said, it's a, it's a premium relative to gas, relative to LDMOS, and, and hopefully the system level benefits. Um, account for um, its usage, and certainly diamond is uh, uh, considerably more. So we don't see it as as uh, something that would enable products um, in the next year or two. I think this is a little bit um, forward looking, and it's addressing the thermal management primarily. So even uh, GAN on SICK offers um, a, a, lo a lot of enhanced uh, capability over GAN on silicon regarding thermal. And then you hit package level limitations. So we're looking at what other substrates that that we can employ to make um, even further benefit of the power densities that the that the GAN material allows you to do. So I would say it's certainly at the research stages for the time being, and and not something that's going to get commercialized uh, in the in the next year or two. Okay, great. Did you want to yeah. talk about? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, actually, I, and this is Grant Wilkins, and I'll just add another on the cost standpoint is that, as Rajiv um, highlighted, yeah, it's going to be more expensive than silicon carbide and LDMOS and on down the chain, but on an area basis, um, at one, you know, there will be a power level of a product that you can achieve um, where the dollars per watt will be cheaper than, than what we could achieve, you know, for a silicon carbide uh, type product. So there, there will be a threshold, you know, a power threshold um, um, at, which, at what point the dollar per watt um, would, would more than likely be uh, cheaper than, than what you could achieve with silicon carbide. But there, there's a threshold, and um, it's still um, 
somewhat premature to you know determine where that threshold is at the time, just given where we are in the development. But but um, it, it will be expected that um, the achievable products um, using GAN on diamond would, would would benefit the dollars per watt numbers. Okay, great. Any, any uh, further comments on that, or I'll move on. I, I, um, our next question asks, what are some of the ways that Tricoin is reducing the channel temperature of the GAN products? I think this might be certainly related to diamond, but maybe some other other approaches. Uh, I, I mean, I think we're we're so at the product level, we're looking at many different um, packaging options. But yes, in the end, you you should be able to make use of that additional power density and still obey the thermal limits. Um, so uh, nothing, you know, um, uh, unusual in terms of that. Um, air cavity ceramic packages have been used. We've got dye level products. We're looking at plastics. We're developing internally all the dye attach uh, and and molding capability um, to uh, to realize and, and assemble all these ourselves so um, I don't do you have any further comments on that grant uh, or Richard uh, yeah I apologize I was trying to rank the, or look at the other questions as well um, what was the question uh, yeah, this is Richard Martin. I'd like to I'd like to comment a little bit. So, you know, the channel temperature in GAN um, you know, depends on a lot of different factors. So, not only does it depend on the the package, it depends on the the base material, the package, what you've got it mounted to, what kind of interface you have uh, between that. Whether you're doing a surface mount application, whether you're doing direct uh, connection to a heat sink, whether you're just using some sort of uh, solder or not, and then the, the 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 dye itself has a lot of impact to to the channel temperature and and how you lay out the dye and and, and I, I must say that you know over the years you know we at Trequent have, have learned a lot and and have have optimized you know the transistor layouts the FET layouts the mimic layouts um, to to optimize the temperature. And then, in, in in addition to that, our our reliability now that we're showing here uh, with our GAN, um, you know, we, we can take advantage of those higher channel temperatures. You know, we've had some customers come to us and say, you know, they're still stuck in the gas days where they, they think they have to limit the channel temperature to to a low value, and they're not taking advantage of the GAN. Um, so 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 that that. That question isn't necessarily a simple, you know, black and white answer. You got to look at the entire system, including the, the, the FET, the technology, the way it's mounted, the way it's packaged, uh, to get to that answer. And you have to be, you know, we have great thermal engineers here that, that can work with you to, to help you assess your your particular application and and and, and how best to to implement it. Okay, no, that's great. I, I uh, certainly can buy an answer that says it's complicated, and we have support for that. <laughs> so, um, uh, mo moving on, let's. Uh, here's here's an interesting one. Is it appropriate to compare LD MOS and GAN at uh, P3DB? And maybe for some people, you can just explain what the the P3DB is. Yeah, um, it's a little bit. Yeah, so that's uh, that's an uh, it's a it's a figure of merit related to. The saturated power and, and where it de deviates from the ideal, uh, and it's a little confusing because the GAN world has has used P3dB, and the LDMOS world has used P1dB traditionally. So um, we tried to be fair in this particular example that we showed. But what you if you open up product data sheets, you're not going to get um, you're not going to get uh, a, a direct comparison until you look at some of the curves that are shown. So, um, from a system level standpoint, yes, um, uh, I think our customers certainly understand that difference. Uh, but um, you may not, if you're just looking at two side by side data sheets, you may not, you know, may not just see it right away. Uh, but we tried to be as um, as appropriate as we could when we when we gave this example. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'd like to add that that. It is absolutely fair, depending on the type of application that you're you're looking at. If you're looking at a, a saturated pulse power radar application, then that's exactly what you want to be comparing. 
if you're if you're looking at a backed off uh, you know linear communications application, then then no, you're not going to be wanting to look at the, the saturated power condition. You'll be wanting to look at the backed off condition. So it really depends. Um, so you got to be careful on how you're comparing the, the parts and 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 their intended application. Okay, great. Um... Uh, how much has the reliability of TriPoint scan process improved over the past, say, three years? Uh, it's not just. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna, um, I would, so TriPoint has, has um, done a lot of work with uh, maturing our, our GAN technology over over that time frame. Um, where you know before you know that you had the million hour benchmark lifetime that that the industry industry uses, and at the time, we were sitting around, um, and us and industry in general, was sitting around 200 degrees C junction that, that, would, that would result in a million hours of lifetime. Um, but again, you know, tri TriQuin has, has spent a lot of time and effort um, to to put out the, the state of the art process regarding reliability. Um, recently, we we um, released a, a technology upgrade that, that took that benchmark of a million hours and you know, took it beyond uh, 225 degrees C. Um, so, so yeah, we, we, the, the the technology is maturing um, and maturing very very quickly, um, both on the reliability side as well as performance side and, and manufacturability. So, a lot of money is being spent, um, not only in industry um, as well as the government, because um, you know the government wants wants GAN um, and defense systems. Um, so, this industry, the commercial side, wants um, wants to Get the benefits of GAN, and reliability needs to be there. And Triquin has has released um, its technology um, to the point that it's it's easily um, you know up at the top of uh, of those numbers um, when you when you relate it to a million hours of lifetime. Okay, um, this is sort of related to manufacturability. And this next question is. Uh, what are the challenges for plastic packages for base station infrastructure products? And perhaps maybe um, that perspective should be from the uh, user perspective. So what are the challenges for plastic packages for, or, or maybe it's implementing or, or both, but what are the challenges for plastic packages for base station infrastructure products? Yeah, so we're certainly um, taking a, a, a very strong look at that and, and making our plans to head towards plastic packages because of the economics. But um, you have to ensure performance. Um, you know, that that's probably the most important. Um, our, that's what our users tell us is don't sacrifice performance for low cost, at least to start with, because then you're throwing away the advantages of the, of the technology. So that's step number one. And step number two would be the on to be able to to have those the, the power density advantages and be able to support the the junction temperature. So there may be some limitations at least to start, but we want to be able to offer um, that in total to be able to take down the cost but still retain the performance. And that's what all of our efforts on plastic packages are are surrounding. Um, another one would be robustness, reliability, tolerance to moisture. And again, we've got a very uh, strong effort at aimed at being able to solve that so you can get away from hermetic packages, which have been used. So GAN itself has uh, more susceptibility to moisture, and it's something that, would, that we're aiming to, to solve at the component level so that the user doesn't have to do anything at the system level and add, add cost. So many different areas, and we're working on all right. of them very, very hard. Okay. Yeah. Well, it sounds a lot more complicated than just putting it in, in a package. Um, yeah. Here's an interesting question: Does Triquin perform production burn-in on the products, or recommend that customers do so? If yes, what conditions and what are the what is the early failure rate we can expect as users? Uh, this is Grant. I'll take that. Um, uh, the quick answer is no. We we do not do production burn-in, nor do we recommend customers to do production burn-in. And it kind of goes back to my statement uh, a minute ago regarding um, the maturity of the process. Um, in the in the early days of of GAN, when it was first being um, pushed out in the market, um, you know, five years ago or so, uh, there there was probably more of a need. It depended on what the application was, and this was just GAN in general, not just TriQuint, but um, just the 
technology maturity um, required some level of burn-in, depending on what the application was. But again, there's been a lot of maturing of the process. Um, a lot of the negatives of the technology that you know any maturing process would would resolve um, has happened. Uh, and today, uh, no, um, Triquin does not burn in um, our products, nor do we recommend they, that they need to, um, nor do we hear from the customer base that, that it's required. Okay. Um, let's see, our next question asks, how does the flicker noise of GAN compare to other technologies? How does flicker noise change in GAN as the amplifier compression is approached? So we got two two-part question there. Yeah. yeah, I'll take that as well. Uh, unfortunately, there's not a good answer to that. Um, there, we, 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 that's not a parameter that we routinely make on on our GAN or our our gas products. Um, there, there's in general, there's no reason to believe that uh, it would be any different between GAN and gas. Um, but unfortunately, I, there's not really a number I can I can talk to um, because I, again, it's not a parameter that that we we have on the top of our list from a from a characterization standpoint, uh, in the past we've had you know foundry customers that that have um, cared about flicker noise, um, depending on what their application is. Um, but in general, that's that hasn't been an, uh, a concern with um, that would that we've heard with with people using our products. And there's no reason um, from our limited data set to believe that um, there would be much of a difference, if any at all, between gas and GAN. Okay. Um. Let's see. Our next question asks, how does the noise figure minimum for a uh, triquin GAN process compare to PHEM processes? Yeah, I'll take that one. Um, there, there, there's, there's really no change. That is, um, noise figure for, for the equivalent gate length. So you have quarter micron GAN versus quarter micron gas. Um, it's, it's in the same ballpark. Um, um, in fact, you know. The data that we we've taken to date is either as good or better um, than the equivalent gate length in gas. So that that's true for both um, you know, the data we've seen for both our quarter micron GAN versus the quarter micron gas, as well as our 0.15 micron technology comparisons. So the noise figure, um, as it, from what we've seen, is is as good or better than the equivalent gate length for gas. Um, uh, but with equivalent noise figures, well, you know the GAN um, gets you very good. Um, gain P1 dB points as well as, as Raji um, mentioned in, in the talk, um, robustness. So really the benefit of GAN with everything being equal is, is the robustness. Okay, great. Um, uh, let's see, our next question asks, is it possible to have X parameter models for your discrete FET devices? And then I'll expand that question to maybe you could talk in general about what models are available for designers working with TriQuint GAN. So this is Richard. I'll take that one. Um, so uh, as we mentioned earlier, we have uh, for for the discrete GAN uh, transistor family, uh, you know, we have partnered with Modelithics to to create those at the die level and and the package level. So you should be seeing uh, some of those are readily available now. Some of them are in beta beta form. Uh, we're still uh, uh, testing testing those. Um, uh, but the, but the rest of the family will be will be coming uh, online shortly. Um, we, we currently do not uh, offer X parameters, uh, but uh, you know, if you want to work with one of our, our, our sales contacts, we can certainly put a, a proposal together uh, to, to to see what's uh, suitable for your particular application. Okay, great. And uh, so, because we kind of covered this before when we we're talking about support. Um, would that be on the last slide of, of wh what's the best way for people to get in touch with uh, uh, the, the support organization if they had further technical uh, questions than the ones we've answered so far? Well, the, um, all the technical contacts um, are, are found through our TriQuint website, and if it's for, for a particular product, um, our data sheets on the last page of the data sheets have um, contact information. Um, okay. Because a lot of it could be product specific. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Any, that... Anyone in sales or in the field will be able to channel it directly to the right people here, and they're they're pretty knowledgeable about who to go to. Okay. Um, I think we're down to. Um, 
most of our questions, right? What types of products would benefit from the high performance characteristics of GAN in the future? Well, you know, uh, I, I guess I mean, in general, um, everybody knows about uh, by the amplifiers, uh, right? So, I mean, they're, they're, the the vast majority of product development will be amplification. Um, LNAs are are fairly early, um, and so Triquin is. Um, has released two LNAs, as Rajiv pointed out, and we're about to release those two LNAs in plastic overmold packaging. Um, we have, you know, further LNA activity on our product development um, roadmaps. Um, switches will continue to be a focus um, as we um, bring to market um, um, longer gate link um, technologies. Um, Really, outside of those, um, there's there's some some thought that the mixtures would benefit with higher dynamic range. Um, we have not looked into that, but there has been some industry talk on you know that you know there's could possibly be be benefit with with mixer development. Um, we, we we did look at it at that technology for for limiters, um, high power limiters. Um, but for Triquin anyway, um, our deep end technology supports um, that functionality, um, and we're, we're about to release, you know, 100 watt plus limiters. Um, actually, we've already released it in the in the DAW version. We'll be releasing it in the package version. So, um, GAN for Triquin anyway didn't provide much benefit on the limiter side um, versus our existing deep end technology. So, again, you know, amplifiers. Um, our power amplifiers, um, low noise amplifiers, um, switches will will be the primary three um, functions that 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 benefit from from GAN technology. But um, you know, we'll, we'll we'll see if anybody is looking at mixers down the road. But. Okay. Well, those are those are pretty important ones anyway. So uh, I think that uh, pretty much wraps it up both for time and uh, for our questions. I think we were able to get through. Um, to all of them. So uh, I thank you, gentlemen. Uh, nice job, Raj. Very good job with your presentation. And I would like to once again thank uh, Triquint for presenting the material and putting it together. And of course, uh, Richardson RFPD um, for sponsoring this webinar and for their continued support of uh, Triquint and Microwave Journal. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll thank our audience and uh, we'll catch you on our next webinar. Bye. Thank you.